Guacamole is a fun way to access your machines over protocols like VNC, RDP, and SSH, all over HTML5. So grab your chips and get ready, because this is Guacamole. Here we are on the Apache Guacamole website. You just install this in Docker and you connect. And I've tried using this with Windows and RDP and I've had success, but I had to really beat around the bush to get there. So today I'm going to be focusing on using this with your Linux machines using SSH. And that's what I'm going to be covering today. I'll install it and we'll get started All right now. Let's go. In order to get started installing Guacamole, you need to make sure that you have Docker installed already. And you can do that by watching this video, which I'm linking above right at the top of the video. See that little banner right there? You can click that and it'll show you how to install Docker and Portainer if you want to use Portainer as well. In this video, we're not using Portainer. So this is the image right here that we're going to be installing using Guacamole. It has all the prerequisites that we need, including the database. So all of that will be in one image, making things much easier to get this installed. So we'll copy this. Oh, by the way, you can also install this on a Raspberry Pi using this RMB6 version down here. But since we're not using a Pi, we'll grab this image here, paste it in an editor. And all we have to do now is just change the volume to where we want it to store the config files on our machine. I'm just gonna do slash guacamole and it'll store it in the root directory in a folder called guacamole. So I'll copy this, sudo, and then we'll paste it again, click paste and we are letting this install. So what it's doing right now is it's pulling down all the images and prerequisites that it needs to install this. It'll take a couple minutes and once it's done here, it'll show you that the server has started and it's ready for connections. If everything went well, you can open the IP of the machine that you installed it on, port 8080, if that's the port that you went with and you didn't change it. In this case, I left everything the same, so Mine is on 8080 and here we are to log into Guacamole. So the default username and password is guac admin and guac admin. And the first thing you wanna do is change the user. So we'll go to settings, under users, add a new user. And I'm just gonna say geeked. You wanna make sure that you have full access to the administration. So you wanna tick all these and then click save. What we'll do is we'll log out and we'll log back in and we'll go back to users and we're going to delete that user, the default user. We're going to delete that one and we'll click delete. Yes, there. Now that's the most secure thing you can do when installing Guacamole is always get rid of the default admin user account. Do that. So we'll go to connections at the top. You can click new connection. And what we have to do is give this a name. So I'll call it MX Cold. This is just the name of the machine that you're connecting to. And I'm gonna be doing this for SSH. So I'll select SSH. I'll call it MX Cold, but I need the IP address for that. And I'll show you here in a minute. Most of the stuff here, you don't have to fill out. And I know it kind of looks overwhelming at first glance, but do know that there's only a few things in here that you have to fill out. With that being said, I'm gonna jump back over to my machine and make sure I have a SSH server installed because if you don't have a server installed, you won't be able to actually connect to the machine. So let's go ahead and get that done first. I should have done this before I even jumped into Guacamole installation. Let's go ahead and do a sudo apt install open SSH dash server. Put your password in, hit yes, and let the installation run. And once this is done, you should be good to go to go ahead and finish adding your connection. So go ahead and jump back over to Guacamole and finish the connection setup. Actually, you know what? While I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and grab the IP address of this machine by typing IP space ADDR. Okay, it looks like I'm on .99. So I'll have to remember that for the setup process. So let's head back over there. Okay, so here I am back over on the Guacamole setup. Sorry, I had to jump in back and forth a little bit there, but... This is going to be a basic setup. I'm going to go ahead and put the IP under parameters where it says network. I'll just paste in, which you saw that I grabbed out of the terminal there just a second ago. The port will be 22 because that is the OpenSSH default port. And the username is going to be the username of your machine, the username and password. So in my case, it's Jeremy. And then the password is my super secret password. This is really all you need to get it up and running, but there are different options. You can set up the color scheme of the terminal itself to make it look different colors. You can change the font. You can change the font size. You can disable copying and pasting from the client and the terminal. There's a bunch of other things you can do here. You can actually do recording 
uh, wake on land if you choose to do so, but I'm just gonna go ahead and click save. We will go ahead and check it out to, actually, we gotta go back to home and MX cold, and we are connected just that fast. So there it is right there, connected via HTML5. So that was actually pretty quick. Okay, so this is kind of weird. I'm connected to my MX Linux machine through an HTML5 browser window, and I'll show you here that you can see that there is the link, the IP of my server, port 8080, and you can see it's in a browser window here. So let's test out htop-d, let's do three seconds. Wow. There it is, HTOP in a browser window connected to my Linux machine, showing you what's going on here. 1.8 gigs out of 31 gigs. That's not bad. There's HTOP on a browser window using guacamole. All right, so here we are back on the guacamole dashboard. You can think of this as a bookmark dashboard for all of your remote connections, including uh, SSH, RDP, Kubernetes even. So it's a great solution if you don't use something like Proxmox to keep track of all of your machines. That's how you install guacamole on a Linux machine to access all of your machines remotely. Um, I highly recommend getting into Proxmox because they have all that built in so you can access all of your machines. And I wanted to show you guys really quick how I do that. So this is Proxmox and each one of these VMs in here has a console which you can pop open in a new window like this. So when you open them in a new window, you get this link. And because it has these links for direct access, I set up a dashboard in Heimdall to where I can access immediately all of my servers within one click. Let's do that again. Let's go to the Ubuntu test bench. And here's the test bench right there. So super simple, easy to set up. Proxmox is the bee's knees. All right, that was, that was kind of weird. That's going to wrap up today's video. If you found it useful, be sure to drop me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below, and I will do my best to get back at you guys as quick as I can. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. Click the bell icon if you want to know when the videos drop. It'll send you a push notification to your phone saying, yo, Geek just dropped a video. Go check it out. We also have a Discord channel. If you want to hop in and talk some tech with us, you are more than welcome to do that. The information for that is in the description below the video. Bye for now.